Spider Geddon is in full swing, and I'm here to discuss all three issues that were released this week. Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0, and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do that all-important, not one, but two, but three! comic book reviews and why is it three well because it all has to do with this week's spider get in event as promised i am going to be talking about every single issue that has to do with spider get it what did i sign myself up for right <laughs> these books are intertwined they're like the web of life without reading one you have to read the others well if you don't want to at least you can follow with me anyway right uh just be advised guys there will be spoilers in these reviews so if you have not read your copies yet please read your copies and then come back and see me so the books that we're going to be talking about today is spider get in issue two we're going to be talking about spider girls issue one and we're going to be talking about spider gwen ghost spider uh issue one as well as they all have to do with the spider get in event so first things first, let's talk about spider Ganon issue two. Last issue, we got to see the Inheritors, they make their return back, okay? They use Superior Octopus's cloning technology, which technically is the Inheritors technology, to come back into real Earth, okay? Well, in this issue, the battle continues, and you're on your toes or on the edge of your seat reading this book to see if our heroes can stop the Inheritors uh, before they start bringing back their entire family and at the same time a superior octopus hits the self-destruct button and they have to get out in time before the place explodes and uh, before those inheritors are created so that's what you get in this particular issue it's pretty much action-packed however this book does sit there and give you a ton of of uh, boxes in the corner going, pick up this spider book, pick up that spider book, pick up this spider book if you wanna know that, because again, it all intertwines together. Um, the book was okay, I like the action in the book, it's not overwhelming you with spider characters. Uh, it kinda gives you the idea of where Spider Gwen went to and why uh, she has her own book now, and it gives you the idea of where Mayday Parker goes with Anya. Uh, on where she had to go to try to um, uh, stop the inheritors as well. Um, <clears throat> seeing that the base was possibly going to explode and being Gwen left in there was kind of cool, but at the same time, you're like, ah, she's not going to die because she's got her own series kicked off, right? So it's like this, uh, okay, type of thing. Um, the other thing that we get in this particular issue is we get to see Karn. I think it is the guy that's in charge of the whole um, web of life type of thing. Uh, we get to see him do battle against his sister, which was kind of interesting, and the end result was kind of cool as well. And you get to see the inheritors wind up getting the upper hand in this issue, which I thought was cool. And now they're searching for their father. And once the father is resurrected, it's almost like the inheritors are unstoppable, okay? So, when it comes to spider Geddon issue two, I thought this book was pretty good. Um, I still don't think it was perfect. Um, I like the artwork. Um, there were some predictable moments here, and obviously there was some selling points to have you buy more of this event's books, okay? Um, but it was okay because it wants you to read some more to see what happens with the inheritors and some of the other spider characters okay so at the end of the day i'm going to give this one a three and a half three and three quarters out of five stars i actually think i like this one a little bit better um than the last one okay so let's talk about the next book all right next one goes to spider girls issue number one this one is written by joey hauser and she is the one, I'm pretty sure, that wrote, uh, towards the end, Renew Your Vows, okay? So, if you read Renew Your Vows, um, I think you're going to understand 100% what's going on and what this Earth's uh, Spider-Man and family is about. If you have not read Renew Your Vows, 
this is going to be kind of new to you. Obviously, we have Spider-Man of this Earth, we have Mary Jane of this Earth, and we have Annie Mayday Parker, um, or Annie May Parker, um, that's in this issue as well, okay? The issue starts off a little slow, a little generic, kind of like how Renew Your Vows reminds me of. We get to see Annie Mae, and we wind up getting to see... Um, <clears throat> Spinneret, which is Mary Jane and Peter Parker, do battle against these vulture-like characters. Annie May has a blackout. She's not sure what's going on. And then we see Anya, and we say we see Mayday Parker uh, come into the picture, and they meet up with the Spider-Man family. Okay, and uh, the way they meet up is they all do this battle against more of this vulture gang. Okay, again. The meetup on how they all met up was it, it was just very generic. Okay, ah, oh, let's throw in a bunch of throwaway vulture characters. Let's have the spider people all meet up, and then let's discuss the problem. And that's basically what the issue was. Now there was some touching moments in here because Mary Jane actually um, talked about the loss of her first child, and her first child was May, and May Day was actually there, and I thought that was kind of a touching moment. And then uh, by the time we wind up finding out by the end of this this book is that Annie May uh, is a very important role in this whole Spider-Verse event. She could be the key to actually solve this whole thing, to get rid of the inheritors forever. She's like the possible chosen one. Uh, so it made for a quite interesting thing. And when you read this issue from the beginning, you wind up getting to see that she was the one that wanted more responsibility. Now it goes from her being not having enough responsibility to actually being the one to save the entire universe or all the spiders. So very interesting story by the time you got to the end of it. So again, kind of generic, but at the same time, it piqued my interest as we got to the to the end of this book. So um, same thing, I'm gonna give this book probably three and a half to three quarters out of the stars. Didn't blow me out of the water, very generic in the beginning. Again, it was a setup, uh, but it wasn't horrible either, okay? Uh, artwork could have been a little bit better for me too. All right, and then last but not least, we're gonna talk about Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider. This is a kickoff off of her new series, um, and this obviously ties into the spider get in event and um, This time around uh, I thought the artwork was okay in this book I, I, I think spider Gwen looks really good or ghost spider whatever you want to call her as well um, The writer now is Sheena and McGuire and the artist is Rosie Campy uh, if I said that correctly so the book had me confused because obviously it says spider getting in here and it opens up with spider Gwen in the beginning just on her earth and I'm kind of like uh, what's going on here like she just got teleported uh, she teleported herself to another world and she had no idea where she's at and here in the beginning of this book she's in her own world and you have no idea what's going on and that kind of spends about the first I want to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pages of the book before it actually starts to tie in into Spider Geddon. Okay, so Spider Ham comes. We get to the point where he starts to recruit her uh, because the inheritors are back. Then we get to the point where we were in Spider Geddon issue two, where she uses her teleporter to transport just in time uh, to escape and she goes into this world that we have no idea where she's at and now she has to try to get back to the main earth okay and she finds out that she finds this old abandoned Oscorp building and she hopes that maybe Norman Osborne or Harry Osborne or some kind of Osborne can help her get back and that this Osborne is not evil again it's a setup book it's very generic. We go to characters that we're very familiar of, that they just throw in here and make generic versions of them of the, themselves. Uh, we get this weird goblin character that's on the glider, throwing pumpkins at uh, Spider-Gwen. We waste about another three or four pages 
to that point until Spider Gwen takes care of her and the goblin goes flying off. And by the time we get to the end of it, we wind up seeing that Gwen meets up with Peter at the end of the issue. And he can't believe that it's actually Gwen Stacy that is Spider Gwen. And she is looking for her help uh, or for his help. So, and that's how that issue ends. Um, so, what did I think about that one? Well, this one was okay, but same thing like Spider Girls. It's more of a setup than anything. And the characters that they used to set this whole thing up was just very, very generic. I thought they did a good job at explaining in this issue how Spider Gwen got to the point that she got to, which was good. But everything else in between there, besides that last page, was just basically throwaway. Um, it, it was like I paid three dollars or four dollars to read, you know, a two-page story. Basically, that's basically what I read. Um, so at the end of the day, I'm going to give that one a three and a quarter out of five stars. So overall, guys, probably the best issue out of anything here is the spider get in issue um i thought the main story did its best job at telling its story um for these other tie-in books if you want to dive deeper into the story i say pick it up the annie may thing is kind of interesting and the ghost spider tie-in is very loose very very loose because all she has to do is just get back to where she was so that's basically it there so overall, for these three books, if I have to rate them together as an average, I gotta say I'm gonna give this a three and a half out of five stars for these three books. And I gotta give Spider Genin to this point um, a three and a half at this point too. There's nothing here that still hasn't blown it out of the water for me. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this review of Spider Genin. Um, hopefully this makes a clear cut decision on maybe what books to buy for this event. And guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification button so you don't miss a single video from me. And until that next comic book review, this is Mike Spider Show signing off. Thanks for watching guys. Take care. Bye.